Hi guys, welcome to my web shooter tutorial. Now, this is a tutorial of the simplest web shooter design that I have ever made, so I thought it was perfect for a tutorial. So, a couple things. Uh, this is the model we're going to be building today. It consists of two basic parts. This is the web shooter, and this is the cartridge. And you can see Web shooter, cartridge, just like that. All right. So this is a very simple model to make. It consists of just 10 3D printed parts and just a handful of commercial off-the-shelf items. So let's start with those. You're going to need five of these circular cylindrical neodymium magnets. These are each six millimeters in diameter and one and a half millimeters in thickness. Uh, you're gonna need five of them and they're just gonna remain stacked just like this for the whole project. You're going to need one of these springs. This is a very stiff spring. If you saw at the beginning of the video where I introduced this, I did a calculation on it. And so it, it looks as if the, the spring constant, by a very rough estimate, is somewhere in the order of 1400 newtons per meter. So between 1000 and 2000 newtons per meter. This spring has a diameter of about 9.5 millimeters, an unstretched length of about 3 centimeters. So everything in that ballpark should work for this project. You're also obviously going to be needing string. Uh, that's for the web. This is very thin white string. In my video I used very strong string that was colored gray. That was actually a Kevlar line. This is very simple string, so we're going to use this to try to fit more string into the cartridge, because I think that's kind of more important. If you, if you have the projectile have a range of 7 meters, you want to try to fit as much string as possible to, to not hinder that. One nail. This is just a very simple nail you can find at any hardware store, a diameter of about 1.84 millimeters and a length of about 2 centimeters, give or take. You're going to need this watch band that you can buy on eBay. I'll post the links to this and all of these in the description. This has a width of 24 millimeters and it's the type that has these kind of uh, mounting holes. So it's not one piece, they come in two separate sides. And for mounting that, we're going to need two screws. These are M3 screws, a little less than three millimeters in diameter. These are 35 millimeters long each. Like I said, I will post the links to all of these commercial parts in the description. The rest of the web shooter has 3D printed parts and you can find those 3D printed parts on my Patreon page. So you can donate just as little as $1 a month to get access to all the STLs I'm going to be posting. It's just this project on there right now, but I'm also going to be posting STLs for the tentacle project and upcoming projects. So stay tuned for that. So once you have those STLs, you can go ahead and print the files. Okay, so I'm going to be printing this in PLA plastic and there's no need to go super fine on the layer height so I'm just going to be using 0.2 millimeters. In addition to that, I do recommend using 100% infill for everything. Uh, that is due to the fact that parts are going to be under a lot of force due to the spring being compressed when the cartridge is loaded. Temperature, for me, this will be different for your printer, should be good for around 200 degrees Celsius. For support material, that definitely needs to be on, and the support overhang angle, I like to set it at 80, because my printer does very well with overhangs, but your printer might be different. Say you don't have a 3D printer, I would be willing to send you these parts in exchange for a large contribution on Patreon. So just contact me through email directly at ta.the.amazing at gmail.com. We can work that out individually. But for now, we're just going to be printing these files and you can do that at home if you have a 3D printer. So first off, we have the most important part for this whole design. You will find this under base.stl on my Patreon. Just a quick rundown. It has a press fit hole in the side and another one on the other side for pins to go so that the trigger can hinge. It has a structure at the bottom so that the spring 
can hook on and stay attached to the shooter when the cartridge isn't loaded. It has a little slot here for the cartridge lever to be compressed that initiates the firing. And it has a little lip here to click the cartridge in place. It has areas for watch bands to be attached. You're going to want to print this standing up like this. And this is due to the fact that you don't want any support material on this spring structure because it's going to be very hard to remove. Don't worry about the layers splitting apart in the middle or anything like that. I haven't had a problem with that. You should be good as long as you use 100% infill. Disclaimer, the spring is very powerful, so be very careful. You should wear safety glasses. Don't underestimate the power of compressed metal. Next, you're going to want to add this part, which is the cartridge body. This one should be printed just like this with the small hole on the bottom. There is a hole here for the nail. That's what the nail is for. The nail goes in there to hinge the cartridge lever. One of these cylinders is for the string to be housed. That's right here. And one of these cylinders is for the projectile, uh, essentially the barrel of the system. Next, the cartridge lever, cartswitch.stl. This is a very simple part, just an extruded projection. And this is the thing that gets attached to the cartridge. So one of these will go in every single cartridge. If you decide to make multiple of them, it'll be hinged by that nail. Next, we have a part called the string nozzle. This is another part to the cartridge. It would sit right here. So that keeps the string inside once it's wound and loaded. Next, we have these lever pieces, which are very long pieces, but pretty simple. You're gonna to wanna to print them like this. This, as you might be able to tell, is the trigger lever. Next, we have this part I call the trigger and you're gonna to wanna to lay this flat so it prints like that. This is the trigger.stl file. These two slots are for those two ends of the lever to insert. Now you have the pin. It is just a pin that attaches levers to the base, and you're gonna to wanna to have two of those. The next part you're gonna to wanna to print is the projectile.stl, so the string will attach there, the magnets will sit in there. That's pretty much it. Now we can arrange them and get to printing. Okay, now that that's all done printing, it took about two hours, we are ready to start putting this thing together. So, let's start by removing the support material. Now I do this with a couple different tools. Usually a flathead screwdriver, a small one helps. Uh, an X-Acto knife helps. Be very careful with this. Pliers usually helps too. Let's get to it. Now that that's done, we can just put it together. So first, let's do the shooter itself. So for that, again, we're going to need a spring. I kind of bent this outward so it can be threaded into the structure that I have on the shooter, this structure right here. All right, that should do it. And as you can see, it kind of comes out to the side a little bit but as long as it's attached, it won't come off if you pull it. Pretty much all that needs to be done. All right, then let's attach the straps. We're going to need our M3 screws, 35 millimeters again. So the first thing you wanna do is take your Phillips head screwdriver, or I guess if you got different ones, you know, whatever tool you need, and screw it in just a little bit. And these are kind of used not as intended. They are threaded directly into the plastic. Works fine. All right, so just do that up until they start to peek through on the other side. Then you take your one of your straps, you insert it in. And eventually you can see that's, that screw is now inside of the strap loop.
Eventually you're going to get to a spot when it gets to about here. That's when it's going to start threading into this part. This part is a tighter fit than this part, so you're going to feel it get harder to screw in. So just keep going. One good thing to do at this point is to thread in and thread out so that you can actually cut proper threads into the plastic. Do that repeatedly. Just about there is where you want it. Now I'm gonna do the other one. And again here, you've got thread in, thread out. So just about there. And then we need to attach our trigger. First thing you wanna do is make the trigger lever in its three parts. Lever pieces and you use the actual trigger. And these are just a press fit. It might be helpful to use pliers. So there's one and there's two. Then you're going to need your two pins. Attach it like so. So here it might be helpful to use pliers, especially some of these because you can press on both sides at once. And you want to move it around a little bit in order for it to get a little bit looser. There it is. And that's, that's the whole thing right there. That's the shooter. So now we need to work on the cartridge, which is where the string and the magnet go into. When assembling the cartridge, the first thing you want to do is add the lever to the cartridge body. So this is kind of like the switch that will activate the shooting. This can be placed into this slot right here. You just need the nail to act as the hinge. And so this nail is gonna be an extreme tight fit. It's not gonna be easy to get out, so make sure you know what you're doing and because you're not gonna be able to get it out. You can start to push it in against the table, all right? And then once you get it to a certain point, I would suggest start hammering it in. You might even try to use the pliers to get it that last little bit. Just squeeze like that. There you have it. So now you have this cartridge and it has a little switch in it. Next, you wanna take care of your string. First, you tie it to the end of the cartridge. Push it through here. Pull it through. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You could tie it around here or I prefer to make a knot on the other side so it can't fit through the hole. So the way I like to do that is to bunch up this rope. So there's three strands and then tie a knot there. Basically just knot it a bunch of times. <laughs> All right, that should do it. All right, so looks like that works. So now we just wanna stuff as much rope as we can into here. All right, so we probably could even do a little bit more than that. Let's just put the cap on it. This is the cap, stringnozzle.stl. All right, so just put it over the top like that. You can rotate this to position it wherever you want. I like to have it come out close to the center, i.e. the nail. And then when that's done, you're gonna wanna cut it just about here so you have enough room to attach it to the projectile. For the projectile, the first thing you wanna do is put the magnets into it. It might help to carve out this edge here so it goes in easier. All right, so, and then what you might wanna do is take these big pliers, try to kind of squeeze it in. Okay, that's in there like that. And now you wanna attach the string into these two holes. This might take some stuffing through using a piece of steel wire. Now you can tie it. I like to triple knot it, and you can trim it. You'll want to put it in, first make sure this switch is down. You'll want to insert it, 
such that the string follows this indent along that side, like so. Then you'll want to use some kind of tool, like a screwdriver, to push it down, then flip the switch through, and then pull it through. The metal tool helps because you can pull it because it's a magnet. So now that projectile is sitting in there and it can't escape until this is flipped down. You'll also want to kind of force the rest of this string into that hole. I like to keep it somewhere like that. So I haven't worked with this string before. I've only worked with the other one and this one is very fragile and very annoying and very thin. So it wasn't the best time. Usually it's a little better, but even even with the other string, you can tell it does take a long time to load these cartridges. And that's why I wanted to have a cartridge system, because loading string like that takes forever. I'm not sure if anyone else has a cartridge system for web shooters like this. I don't know. I do, and I really like the system I have. So you can make as many of these as you want and just shoot them after shoot them after, sh after shoot them. And, you know, you can still reuse them, i.e. reload them, but you don't have to do it immediately, which I think is great. So now we have our finished shooter and we have our finished cartridge. So let's put this on. Just like that. And we can load our cartridge. Just like that. So why don't we go try it out? I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons, Otto Inc., Christopher Jordan, Green Ninja, Jacob Zero, Jalen Britt, Caleb Choice, Nicholas Sykes, Spider Kid, The Arachnids, The Blood Spider, and Vigilantics. Don't forget to support me on Patreon if you want. However, I do want to suggest you donate to the COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund for the World Health Organization. This is one way we can all contribute to help communities most impacted by COVID-19. Yeah, so we managed to fit quite a bit of string in there. Very cool. Nice. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay amazing. I'll catch you guys next time.